Hey, good evening. At this uh, time, we're going to call to order a public hearing of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners on Thursday, August the 12th, 2021 at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Franklin County Justice Center here in Carnesville, Georgia. We know for record we have a quorum this afternoon of four commissioners. Commissioner Franklin could not be with us this afternoon due to illness, and we just ask everyone to keep him and his family in prayer. Uh, in light of the ongoing public health crisis, we encourage everyone here today to practice appropriate social distancing, and we also encourage you to wear a mask for your protection. The purpose of this afternoon's hearing is to receive public comment on the property tax millage rate. This Sir, is the. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll talk as loud as I can. We don't really have a good sound system. If you want to move up to the front, you can. It might, it might help. The purpose of this afternoon's hearing is to receive public comment on the property tax millage rate. This is the third of three public hearings that we'll hold on this issue. And immediately following this uh, hearing this afternoon, we're going to hold a special call meeting at which time we'll set the property tax millage rates. At this time, we need to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, so is there a motion to approve the hearing agenda as presented? I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda as, as written. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has made a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as presented, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. I, I, why don't you move up? I don't, that's the best I can do. I'm sorry. I apologize. If you want to come up and slide the chair up a little closer, you can. Anybody who wants to move up, feel free. We've got several seats up here. Uh, all in favor of the motion to approve the agenda, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry four to zero, and the agenda is, is approved as presented. Uh, the item on the the first item on the agenda is a property tax millage rate. We briefly discussed this rate over several meetings, and we asked the county manager to present to us three different options. And I just want to briefly mention those, and then I'll turn it over to Mr. Turner. Option one would be to leave the millage rate at the current rate, and that's at 11.700 mills for the incorporated areas, and 10.553 mills for the unincorporated areas in the county. If we leave the millage rate the same, the because of inflationary growth in the tax digest, this would represent a tax increase of approximately 4%. Option two would be to reduce the millage rate to the rollback rate. Uh, that would eliminate the tax increase due to inflationary growth in the digest. Under this option, the millage would decrease to about 11.144 for the incorporated areas and 10.263 for the unincorporated areas. At this level, the effective tax rate would be the same as last year and there would be no tax increase. Option three would be to reduce the millage rate by one quarter mil beyond the rollback rate. And this is what we chose to do last year. This would represent a marginal tax reduction and the millage rate would decrease to about 10.894 for the incorporated areas and 10.13 for the unincorporated areas. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna turn the, me the hearing over to our County Manager, Mr. Turner, to present those further. Mr. Turner. All right, good evening, Commissioners. Uh, we'll just briefly, again, like we talked about in prior meetings, uh, just talking about the millage rate and what that's gonna mean for us going forward. Uh, as the Chairman's kind of gone through and talked about the different options that we have presented over the course of some meetings. Uh, those are the options on the table. Uh, we'll just kind of briefly go through a little bit of where we stand and, and what that does mean, uh, some of the things of what that means for the county going forward. Um, so what you have uh, in your slide presentation before you is just looking at just the history of what the unincorporated millage rate is. So this just shows where we've stood over the last several years, uh, the last bar being the current year 2021 with holding at the current millage rate currently, uh, but to be determined tonight. Uh, the next slide is just showing the incorporated millage rate, same thing, a five-year history of that with the last of 2021 at our current rate standing. As we continue talking about the millage rate, like was mentioned with the quarter rollback, we're talking about going from the current 10.553 to 10.303, uh, and also 11.7 to 11.45 and what those values are. 
We've looked at what the what the marginal decrease would be in rolling at the military. We're talking about uh, about a relative nine and a half dollar decrease for a value of home of a hundred thousand, about fifteen dollars for a home that's valued at about one hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, so very minimal uh, in, impact, I think, for uh, for the overall of that. And you also did mention to the full rollback, uh, which would take us uh, from uh, eleven point seven to eleven point one one four and also 10.553 to 10.263. Uh, a couple other things that we talked about, just as we talked about in prior meetings, just looking at what uh, our strategic goals are and what that plan with the military should be or, and things that we should consider within that, whether we're raising, staying the same or lowering, is just thinking about, uh, we've talked about growth within the county, uh, but I think as we talk about growth within the county, we do have to also talk about growth within departments as well, uh, because if we are looking at the probability of taking on more citizens, uh, there are gonna be more services that are needed within within the county. Um, these are just a couple of the items that we talked about within the retreat, and there's just a way to think about that as far as when we talk about the marginal increase of about 4.3%, how that does impact some of the things that we talked about from strategic goals, how we're able to reach those goals, um, especially specifically when we're talking about growth of departments. That could be something that is impacted by that strongly when we're talking about uh, things like the code enforcement, roads department that we talked about needing to see growth within those areas. That could be impacted by that. Um, another strategic goal that we've talked about is talking about staff increases uh, when we're talking about merit increases and also looking at offering more competitive pay, trying to level out our pay as far as uh, the surrounding counties. Uh, these are things that uh, we're looking at what the, that tax base does for us. It could be things that do help us to reach those goals a little bit easier and a little bit quicker uh, than, rather than uh, the, the rollback. Uh, but of course for us, with more competitive pay, that is I think something that should be a priority for the county because as we are looking at attracting and retaining talent, uh, we do want to make sure that we are able to not have, have people come in, we train them, and they leave in the short term. Uh, we want to make sure we're finding ways to attract people and keep them here for the long term, um, because obviously turnover is the high expense for us to have to go through with the advertising, the training, and the things that we have to go through with uh, actually uh, bringing people on board. Uh, but those are some of the strategic goals that we've talked about uh, over these last several months and the last several meetings that would be impacted potentially. Um, just as we talk a little bit more about growth, we have talked about how the county is poised to see growth um, with there being developments of housing. Uh, we don't have a lot of industrial development that I think is on the docket right now, but as far as what's there, more of the housing standpoint, uh, we do have a considerable amount of housing, I think, county-wide. Uh, but we're probably not likely to see the impact of that to the digest for another couple of years uh, would be the likelihood of that. Uh, we definitely won't see that within this fiscal year whatsoever, uh, but, but we would likely see that in about two years. Uh, so we won't realize that immediately. I think we will have a considerable amount of housing overall. I don't have an overall number of, house, uh, of houses that are to be developed within the, house, within the county overall, uh, but there is the impact of that that, uh, that does tax county services is something that we do also have to think about. Uh, so as we do grow, and as we are bringing in whatever that number of people are, even if whether they're in the cities or they're in the unincorporated area, we do have to keep in mind they are still using roads, they are still going throughout the county in various capacities, uh, so there are still gonna be some services that are gonna be utilized by those people regardless of where they live. Uh, something that I think the county should focus on in looking at resources is really focusing on building our infrastructure. Um, infrastructure, I think, um, has a lot of different values for us as far as when you're talking about the utility infrastructure, road infrastructure, and looking at infrastructure as personnel. Uh, these are things that I think we need to really strongly look at uh, because those are things that um, obviously we hear a lot about right now and, and things that we need to work on. I think we can come up with a strong plan to be able to address some of these with uh, keeping our, our funding at the current level. Uh, with real estate taxes being about a third of our overall revenue, uh, that is a high impact item for us. Um, so when that shifts in any way up and down, that is a high impact for us, uh, whether it be up or down. Uh, and, and, and the likelihood is, I mean, we're not here to say to you that we're expecting a collapse in the market guaranteed or, or anything like that, or a boom in the market, but we do just have to be cognizant 
of the fact that that is our primary market uh, as far as our revenues. So another thing that we have talked about is just looking at the uh, pricing. So you do have like a CPI, when we're talking about cost of living, a uh, CPI from the consumer side of that. But when you look at the flip side of that, then you're talking about a, a producer, so a PPI, so basically a producer uh, price index. Uh, so we do have to also keep in mind that even though there might be the, the marginal increase in taxes overall 4.31%, just on the overall, from a PPI perspective of producers, just in general, the increase to that cost is about 5.4% over the last 12 months. So with that being said, that kind of means that we're still overvalued at the cost of producing products. Now that's not an absolute true prediction for government services, but in general for the, for the, for the cost of producing products, that cost of products over the last 12 months has gone up would be the general thought to that. So just like on the flip side of that, for consumers, there's CPI or, or cost of living, uh, producers have that same thing, and us being a producer of services and or product to the citizens, we also have that cost of living that's increased as well. So I think that's just a few things that we have to think about as we're going towards that decision. Um, I know that you know we don't take it lightly anytime that we're talking about the taxes and our tax base. And we want to make sure that we are doing the best that we can for the citizens. Uh, but I do think we do have to just really think hard about that. What that looks like for us, if there is going to be the maintaining of the taxes and that, that marginal increase, how do we tie that to do things that are going to be better for the citizenry? And I think that we do have some things that we can very easily tie that to uh, that would have impact. Uh, and I think that's just kind of where, uh, as I've evaluated that, where we stand as a county. Uh, I think that's all I have. But do you have any questions for me? Commissioners? Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Turner. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, the purpose of this public comment section is to give citizens the opportunity to make comments about the proposed uh, tax, property tax millage rate. This is not a question and answer session, but if you have questions, we're going to ask you to write those down and give those to our clerk, Ms. Finger. Uh, and someone will contact you in the next few days and try to answer any specific questions that you have. When you're called, we're going to ask you to come up to the podium and begin by giving your name and address to the clerk. Each speaker will have up to five minutes, uh, and we have a timer available so that you can see how much time you have remaining so that you may adjust your remarks. Each person may only speak once, and you cannot yield unused time to another person. Uh, tonight, all the comments must be limited to the property tax millage rates, which is the topic of our hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak on any other item may come to a future meeting and do so. Members of the public are required to follow the same rules of decorum as commissioners, and that just means that you are respectful, that you're civil, and that you avoid any personal attacks. Uh, members of the public may not interrupt when someone else is standing up and speaking. We're going to begin the public comment section by hearing from Mr. Bobby Martin, our tax commissioner. So, Mr. Martin, if you'll come up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. Glad to be here. Appreciate you guys serving in the capacity that, that you're in. And just let me say this up front, Mr. Chairman. I may go over five minutes. Uh, I think I'm not going down any rabbit hole, so if you, I don't want to speak through this so people don't understand. I'd like to take my time and as we go, if you would indulge me in that. We will. Okay. Normally, I don't speak at hearings concerning the millage rate being set. Most years, that decision is pretty much nailed down at the point the first advertisement is published. Please understand I'm not here to tell you what I think you should do. I don't have enough information about your financial position or your list of goals to make that recommendation. I do want to provide you with some information that I believe should be considered. I have four points that I would like to make, and I'm going to pretty much read this because I'm giving factual information and I don't want to mess anything up. That's fine. My first point, over the past few weeks or months, I have received inquiries from residents, including some of our mayors, asking questions about why we have different millage rates for city residents versus county residents, some of whom asserted that that is not fair. So why do we have the different rates and what's the justification for that? 
Counties and municipal corporations are authorized to levy a tax not to exceed 2.5% upon the gross direct premiums of all foreign, alien, and domestic insurance companies doing business in the state other than life insurance companies. So what this is saying is any insurance company who sells a policy in the unincorporated area of the county, you guys get 2.5% of that policy. Okay. Franklin County receives this tax from residents who live in and pay premiums in the unincorporated area of the county. The insurance premium tax is distributed to the Board of Commissioners annually. In 2020, this amounted to $1,156,528.67. In 15,941 parcels of real property. Real property is considered dirt and anything permanently attached to it. It could be your house, commercial buildings, anything that's real property. It's not, what it's not is boats or inventory or equipment or that kind of thing. Okay? So we have 15,941 parcels of that. 445 of those are exempt property, being government buildings, churches, etc., that kind of thing. Of the 15,496 taxable parcels, 3,855 parcels, 25% were reassessed, and the property value was increased this year due to inflationary growth. That amounts to $63,491,751. That's the fair market value of that. Please keep in mind. Please keep in mind that some of this value is exempted and negated due to the conservation use program. That works out to be an average of six thousand five hundred and eighty-seven dollars and ninety-eight cents value per reassessed parcel when you spread it over the three thousand eight hundred and fifty-five parcels. Two thousand four hundred and thirty-seven of those people who were reassessed live in the unincorporated area. For those people, the average increase in tax dollars for the county, not including the school or the IBA, for the county, their tax increase will be $69.52 per parcel. <coughs> the 1,418 people who live in the incorporated area will see a $77.08 increase for county taxes. Franklin County Board of Education and Board of Commissioners were required by law to advertise an increase of approximately $22.24 and $32.24 in the newspaper. Considering the overall millage rate, all entities excluding municipalities, the average increase for the 3,855 people who were reassessed 
will be $183.16 each. Barcroft and 22 or 32. Of the five of you, of the five commissioners, two of you have no increase at all. One of you has a 26% increase, one of you has a 14% increase, and one of you has a 10% increase. Personally, I have a 23% increase at my house. Please remember, we advertised a tax increase of 4.31% in the newspaper. However, that is spread over 15,496 parcels, and we're only going up on 3,855. Now I believe we begin to see the problem. Between the five of you collectively, if, if you reduce the millage rate tonight to the rollback rate, you reduce the tax liability of the group by $88.87. However, the group has an increase of $769.57. If you reduce the millage to a quarter mill below the rollback rate, the group saves a total of $165.47. Two of you had no increase at all. All of you get the reduction. If you rolled the rate back a quarter mil below the rollback rate, one of our largest industries, actually our largest industry in the county, saves $39,203.97. They had no increase this year, zero. The top 25 corporate taxpayers will have a reduction of $92,481.66 in taxes. They did not have an increase. That's why the five of you see a total decrease of $165.47. I anticipated Mr. Scoggins would be here tonight, so I looked at his. He personally has an increase of 16% on his property. His tax bill is increasing $212.08. If you roll the millage rate back, it will save him $13.35. The good news is, this year, the senior tax exemption was increased from ten dollars to $20,000. So our seniors' increase will partially or fully be absorbed by that increase in the exemption. I want to personally thank each and every one of you, also Representative Powell and the school board, for allowing that initiative to be put on the ballot. And as I recall, 82% of our voting public voted for that last November. So that the seniors have that savings this year. Regardless of what decision you make tonight, you cannot possibly make this increase fair or equitable for all individuals involved. My third point. Our tax assessors do a great job carrying out the duties that the state requires. Mr. Gary Farmer is the chairman of that board of assessors, and the members are Mr. Dan Stroud and Mr. Eddie Wayne Grizzle. Mr. Rick Cawthorn is the chief appraiser and hires and manages the staff. We have not had a delayed digest and have not been penalized for being out of compliance under this team's leadership. They do a great job, as evidenced by this audit. We received this last week from the State Department of Audits and Accounts. Audit oh, was very good. Our assessment level is 38.25. At that level, the Board of Education receives the full amount of QBE funding, and public utilities pay us at the 40% rate. If this audit tells us anything, it's telling us that our values are just a tick low, but not low enough that we were penalized. My last point. Growing up, my dad told me that countless times he told me that it doesn't matter so much what you make, it's what you do with it. That's true in government. We must be good stewards of the funds that we've been entrusted with. And I certainly trust you guys to use those funds wisely. But I want to make one point before I sit down. I certainly understand the benefit of consolidating the county offices into one building. I do, however, believe 
we should consider doing should not consider doing that until our bonded indebtedness is paid down so that we can expense plus funds for the construction of that new building. We should never consider spending taxpayer money kind of trying to bring a 1950s building that doesn't meet our needs, is not ideally located, which has roofing, wiring, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and layout issues into compliance with today's ADA Title II standards. In my opinion, we have much greater needs that need to be addressed. Having said that, I believe the current tax commissioner's office will serve us well at least for another decade. So, guys, I, I would certainly hate to see us go and spend these tax funds on that project. I will tell you this, we're lucky to have the assessor's office we have. You say, why some people get the increase, others not. That's the way we all balance it. As I said, they're doing a good job. We collect at the end of the fiscal year, June 30th, 99.62% of the taxes that were due for this year was in the bank and distributed to you guys. So whatever you levy, we will collect. And I'm glad I'm not in your seat. <laughs> whatever decision you make, I will support. When people complain to me as they're passing the check across the counter, I will defend you. I don't think there's a wrong decision that can be made tonight. Uh, I appreciate what you guys do for the county. Basically, you're volunteering your time and you do an awesome job. Recording in progress. If you have any questions, I don't know if that's appropriate, but I'd be glad to, to ask, answer those. We, we, we can because we'll consider you as part of the, of the standard public hearing for the officials. Uh, so do you guys have questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my wife checks the tax bill. Uh, did I get the increase? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious. And while you're checking it out, just to verify, essentially you're saying of taxable property, only a quarter are actually receiving a, a, a real estate value increase that is correct sir and some of the larger industries paying taxes won't be receiving that like their real estate value was not assessed to be increased so if we get a, a, a type, any type of drop or millage drop they'd actually get a tax break they would okay. they would the top and the top 25 taxpayers if you drop to the rollback rate they will receive a $49,666 reduction. If you go a quarter of a mil below the rollback rate, they're receiving $92,481.66. Mr. Swales, you had a 10% increase in your taxes. Your tax liability went up $191.96. Too late to contest that. Too <laughs> late to contest that. Personally, mine at the house went up 270 bucks. You know, and I've always been one to believe that you should keep the military as low as possible. Still believe that. The properties that were no severely impacted this year, from what I have been able to see in our digest and from what I've been told, was the older houses and rural land. What we all know about rural land is most of it's in conservation use. Mm -hmm. So as the conservation use value, as the fair market increases, so does the exemption value. So nothing is really realized there. So what's really being hit is the older houses. A lot of times the older houses are owned by the older people. Now the good news is you guys did give an exemption break to our senior citizens, those 65 and over. That was a godsend. So that's where we are. Um, as Mr. Turner said, everybody's talking about new subdivisions and that kind of thing. Okay? You need to understand for a property to be taxable, it has to be there on January 1st. 
If you go out and start building that house on January 2nd and you complete it by the 1st of March, it's not taxable at all for that year. You can only tax what was there on January 1st. If it's just dried in, you tax it at whatever percentage that's determined to be. If it's complete, you charge the full taxes. Having said that, if, um, if your house burns on January 2nd, it's tough. You've got to pay the whole year, so it kind of works both ways. Yeah. But the new growth that's being considered now, it's August. It won't even be on next year's digest, to be honest with you, in my opinion. It'll be the year after, I do believe. Um, now, there are some real growth, and real growth was not in the numbers I mentioned tonight. Okay, I only talked about inflationary growth. And inflationary growth is you don't make any improvements to your house, but because of the way things are selling, your value goes up. Okay, so when plywood has recently cost as much as $90 a sheet, this inflationary growth is going to be very vulnerable. Uh, I don't know. A few years ago, you know, they put a moratorium on it. I don't, I don't know if the state has anything like that in mind or not, but it's all over the map. Mm -hmm. It's all over the map, guys. I'm, I'm glad I don't have to make that decision tonight. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, thank you. All right, what we'll do is call one at a time for people who wish to speak. So if you want to make a public comment, if you'll raise your hand, we'll have you come up one at a time. So would anyone like to make a public comment? Raise your hand. Anyone like to speak? Come on up. Just remember, give your name and address before you start, please. My name is Wayne Young. I live at 33-year Meadow State Road car. A while ago, this gentleman over here said something about the infrastructure of the road. It doesn't take so much money you asking for increase for roads. Why don't you go to the federal government and get the money that they are offering to give to the counties and the state to do that infrastructure work? That would be the, my suggestion, and to save the county and the people in the counties a little money. If the federal government willing to give it, take it. Don't just let it go. All even northern states are getting it. It's like going all wild on it. Every time you turn the TV on, you see a different state building new roads and new bridges. If you don't build a new road, you got to build a new bridge across the creek because there ain't nothing there to start with. And that, that, that's what I'd like to see. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Young. <clears throat> Anyone else like to speak? If you raise your hand, we'll have you come up. Come on up, please. Just remember, before you start, give your name and address to the clerk. Come, come up to the podium, please. Thank you. I'm Judy Callahan. Okay. And I'm going to speak where everybody can hear me. I don't think this meeting was set up for people. Ma'am, you're going to have to address the, the chair, okay. please. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. I don't think this should be that formal a meeting if everybody here is present and wanting to speak. I think you should be very please, you, You're going to have to keep your comments to the tax issue, please. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's my point exactly. Thank you. It should be more informal. I would like to thank Bobby Martin for considering the senior citizens. Um, he always has considered the senior citizens. The fact that so many senior citizens are living on social security, many of them don't have pensions, many of them don't have a savings plan, they don't have any way to get out and uh, get a job and make more money like most people do. Um, I just think that the senior citizens should be considered in every move that's made as far as tax increases is concerned. There are many things that uh, that we, I'm a senior citizen, have been for many years. Many things that <clears throat> we still do, that you do, we pay school taxes, you know, and we should, our kids deserve everything that money can buy. I'm all for that, you know. But I'm wondering, if you put that thing up where you're listing the uh, things that are taking place or should take place, the apartments that's going to be built here, right? The, aren't we going to have some apartments that are built here? Not, not in the county, I don't believe. Maybe not, in the city. Not in the county? Right, in the city. In, in Livonia. There are in some the city in limits Livonia. of Livonia. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. That's 
Franklin County, right? But we don't mess in. But it's right? outside our. Okay. It's outside our. But that was a rental property, right? Uh -huh. How I many see. people? I wonder. Gonna, from what I read in the paper, it's going to facilitate a lot of people that have children in school. That's. They won't pay any property taxes. It falls back on everybody and senior citizens. And. You know, a lot of these senior citizens live in um, rundown homes. They can't afford to improve them. Still have to pay taxes on that. So that's about, that's my concern. There are a lot of people that are a lot, uh, they're less unfortunate, unfortunate than I am, less fortunate than I am. And my heart goes out to them because it's struggling. Many of them have to pay their taxes uh, every three months or whatever they have something set up where they don't have to pay it all at the end of the year because they just plain don't have it. I know one family that had to borrow money to pay their taxes, you know. And so just don't forget us because, you know, when you go back down the line to a great grandfather, I mean, why are we here? <laughs> we are we are their offspring. You know, our grandfathers, our great grandfather, our grandfather, our parents, us, our senior citizens have always been in the picture. I'm saying we don't need to forget them. We need to keep them in mind at all times, and we need to honor them in every way possible. I'm sorry if I broke any of your rules. Thank you, Ms. Callahan. Would anyone else like to speak? If you'll raise your hand. Anyone? Okay. That, that'll conclude the meeting then. Uh, at, at this time, we're going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Guys, if y'all hold it down while we're talking. Ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. Mr. West, you made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Swales seconds the motion. All in favor, signify by raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Okay, the motion will carry three to zero. And the public hearing stands adjourned. It is uh, it's 648 maybe on that clock. Uh, we'll start. I, I'm sorry, 637. We'll start at 6.50. We'll give a small break in case we need to use, any of us need to use the restroom. So the regular meeting will begin at 6.50. Ma'am, we're going to have to ask you all to be quiet while the meeting is going on, okay? Because it's distracting. Thank you. Appreciate it. So at 6.50. So we'll adjourn. All right. At this time, we're going to call to order a special called meeting of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. And this is on Thursday, August the 12th, 2021 at 6.50 p.m., at the Franklin County Justice Center in Carnesville, Georgia. We note again for the record, we have four commissioners present tonight. Commissioner Franklin could not be with us and we just ask that everybody remember him and his family in prayers. He's uh, out sick. Uh, in light of the public health crisis, we wanna encourage everyone here tonight uh, to practice appropriate social distancing. And we also encourage you to wear a mask for your protection. At this time, Commissioner Franklin is, uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Foster is going to give us an invocation and following that we'll have the pledge. So we ask that you remain standing and join us in the pledge. Please stand. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to gather here uh, to make these important decisions for the county. Uh, please, Lord, let us uh, uh, be, be with Robert Franklin and uh, his family as they uh, as they uh, get better, Lord, and just be with us when we make our decisions tonight. In our pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The purpose of this special called meeting is to set the property tax millage rates for the county, the Industrial Building Authority, and the Board of Education. At this time, we need to approve tonight's meeting agenda. So is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I make the motion to approve tonight's agenda as presented. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has made a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as presented signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry three to zero, and tonight's agenda is approved as presented. Tonight, uh, the, the next item on the agenda is the property tax millage rate. Tonight, we need to establish this for the county, for the Industrial Building Authority, and for the Board of Education. 
We will need to consider and vote on each of the three rates or, or groups separately. And after we've done that, we will vote to adopt a tax resolution that incorporates all of that. So the first of the three is the county property tax millage rate. Commissioners, you've heard from the county manager and the tax commissioner, and you've taken part in the discussions about the millage rate in each of the three public hearings that we've held on this issue. So this time, is there a motion to set the tax millage rate for the county? Uh, when you make a motion, the motion needs to specify the rate for incorporated and unincorporated areas. Schmidt, I'd like to make a motion uh, to reduce the millage rate to the rollback rate. That would be a uh, 11.144 for the incorporated and 10.263 for the unincorporated. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has made a motion to set the incorporated millage rate at the rollback rate of 11.144 mills and to set the unincorporated millage rate at 10.263 mills. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has seconded the motion. Uh, we'll open it up for discussion. We'll start with Commissioner Foster. I don't really have much. I just think that we, you know, don't want to increase taxes, but I, do, I know what the county needs, need, need certain things, and I want to be able to take care of our employees and, and do the things that we need to need to do. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we did have a meeting not that long ago um, about our vision for the county and the things we want to see, um, the services that we provide, and... Um, how sadly many of those uh, employees are woefully underpaid. Um, you know, these services are sometimes critical services. Uh, it is life and death sometimes when you're talking about EMS um, and um, those types of things. And so having the best possible people in place matters, whether it be at that level or in our county offices. Um, I understand, you know, the reasoning uh, for the vote, um, I just think I, I don't. I feel like every year we it always comes back to well, this sneaked up on us again. This snuck up on us. We've got to figure out our tax rate now. That's unacceptable. That's not vision. That's not preparing for the future. That's not you know saying this is what Franklin County wants to be. And I'm all for trying to minimize taxes. And if that's part of the vision for what we're trying to offer for everyone here, all the citizens, then yeah, I'm, I'm for it. But I just don't want to keep repeating the cycle of, oh, where are we? What's the tax rate? Okay, what are we going to do? Um, it just seems, it seems like there's no focus when it comes to that. I do know that we have things that we need. We need, um, we need a new jail. That's coming up pretty soon. It's something that would kind of kick that can down the road. Um, and and that's a service that we need to provide at some point. And then at some point we will need county offices. And maybe, like uh, Mr. Martin said, it, it, maybe it does take that type of investment to build something that's quality that's going to last 50 years, you know, for the next couple generations. Um, by not considering these things truly and fully before we take this vote, we're doing everyone here a disservice. So, again, I'm all for paying lower taxes. I just found out I'm gonna be paying $200 more. You know, I'm not excited about that. Um, but $200 well spent is something that I do value. To just, you know, dismiss it. You know, for me, I don't. I, I do know that there are some people that are suffering, and I don't take their tax increases or the potential lightly. But what is the vision? What is the vision for everyone? I don't think we take the milling rate lightly. I don't think we have since I've been in office. And uh, I don't think it's ever snuck up on us. We may have different visions and, and everything. We, we are pretty much in line with the visions that we want for the county. But I also know that the median income for the citizens in this county, the last time I looked, was under $30,000. And to keep putting the tax burden on the property owners, we need to find a different route. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need to figure out what do we do to get other things coming into this county? Why are we getting overlooked? 
Those are things we need to be figuring out. That adds, adds to our tax base. The, the new houses, things like that, does not bring to the tax base what a business or an industry does. That takes the burden off of our taxpayers. That's what helps us grow. That's what helps us achieve things that we want to grow into. I don't think you do it on the backs of the property owners in the county. Okay. I, I would just echo those comments. We last year especially this year i mean we started the discussion about the millage rate you know as early as april in depth in may uh we I, I know i for one tried to foster that discussion over and over and over again uh so we've been think. i mean we take that i take that seriously and i, I just don't come to this meeting with an idea of what the tax, property tax millage rate should be my philosophy is we need to keep the taxes as low as possible um, I'd, I'd love to see us go beyond this to a quarter mil, beyond the rollback rate, because I think particularly this year, we've had a new county manager who's done a good job of budgeting. We budgeted our employee raises. We budgeted for the first time, I think, in a long time, a contingency fund to meet unexpected expenses. And all three of these options produce tax revenue that is higher than what we actually budgeted in our budget, which is smart. But like the tax commissioner said, and like we see every year, he does a phenomenal job of collecting the taxes that are owed. And I feel like, barring a major disaster, at which point this, this conversation would be moot, I, I feel like we can count on the revenue because he does such a good job with that. Uh, so I, I just, I feel like, and, and that's my governing philosophy, we need to keep taxes as low as possible. And so, as I said before, I want us to look at a tax uh, decrease every single year. We may not can do it every year, but we need to look at it and make sure we fully discussed it. And, and I mean, I feel like we have. We've discussed it multiple times. Um, are there is there any more? Yeah, I mean, like my that? contention is, is yeah, we we talked about the tax rate, but it wasn't. I mean, our our, our county manager essentially said he gave us some valuable information that I don't feel was considered. Um, by by us as a group, and I know because I've asked them who's had conversations with them. Yeah. Um, so again, I'm not necessarily opposed to what was presented and what the motions were. All I'm saying is, is as a whole, I, and I agree with you completely. Industry does need to come. You know, it doesn't need to sit. We are one of those uh, counties where our citizens carry the the vast bulk of our tax burden. Right. I, I don't discount that. All I'm saying is, is um, the vision and the growth, the, there has to be a bigger picture when we're assessing it. And it needs to be throughout the year, not just, it seems to me like it, it sneaks up on us. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Any, any other comments? Uh, I okay. Hearing no more discussion, all in favor of the motion to set the incorporated millage rate at the rollback rate of 11.144 mills and to set the unincorporated millage rate at 10.263 mills, uh, which again is the rollback rate signified by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry three to zero and the incorporated millage rate is set at 11.144 mills and the unincorporated millage rate is set at 10.263 mills. The next rate we need to consider is the millage rate for the Industrial Building Authority. The IBA, as it's known, is a tax recommending authority, but they are not a tax levying authority. The Board of Commissioners must levy any tax for the IBA. And per the Georgia statute, uh, and that's OCGA 48-5-220 and 20, the county is authorized to levy and collect up to one mill to provide financial assistance to the IBA for the purpose of developing trade, commerce, industry, and employment opportunities in Franklin County. The IBA is recommending the 0 0.25 mills, which is the same rate that was passed last year and has been the same rate for several years. I, I don't know the exact number of years prior to that. Due to inflation in the tax digest, this same millage rate, if approved, does produce approximately 4% increase for the IBA's tax levy over last year. Uh, at this time, is there a motion to establish the property tax millage rate for the IBA? And again, their rec their recommendation is is a quarter mil, zero point two five mil.
I'll make a motion that we approve the IBA's request for a quarter mil. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Swales has made a motion to set the property tax millage rate for the IBA at a quarter mil. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has seconded the motion. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Swales? No. Mr. Wester? Mr. No. Foster? Okay. Hearing no more, all in favor of the motion to set the property tax millage rate for the IBA at a quarter mil, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry three to zero, and the property tax millage rate for the IBA is set at a quarter mil, 0.25 mil. The last rate is that of the Board of Education. The Board of, Ed Board of Commissioners is obligated by statute, by law, to approve the tax levy set by the Board of Education. The school board has set their tax levy at 17 mils. At this time, is there a motion to approve the property tax millage of 17 mils set by the Board of Education? I'll make a motion that we approve the Board of Education's uh, millage rate request at 17 mils. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has made a motion to approve the property tax levy of 17 mils by the Board of Education. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Thank you. Commissioner Foster has seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to approve the property tax levy of 17 mils by the Board of Education signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry three to zero and the property tax levy of 17 mills by the Board of Education is approved. The last order of business is to adopt the resolution that establishes all of these rates. Uh, and so again, according to how we just voted, this resolution would set the property tax millage rate for the county at 11.144 mills for the incorporated areas and 10.263 mills for the unincorporated areas the property tax millage rate for the IBA would be one, one quarter mil, 0 0.25 mils, and the property tax uh, millage rate for the Board of Education would be 17 mils. Is there a motion to adopt this resolution establishing the property tax millage rates for the county, the IBA, and the Board of Education? I'll make a motion that we adopt this tax resolution for the county, the IBA, and the school board. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has made a motion to adopt the resolution. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Commissioner Foster seconded the motion. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to adopt uh, the resolution establishing the pop property tax millage rates, specifically 11.144 mills for the incorporated areas of the county and 10.263 mills for the unincorporated areas of the county, uh, 0 0.25 mills for the IBA and 17 mills for the Board of Education. Signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry three to zero and the resolution establishing the property tax millage rates is adopted. Uh, the next item on the agenda is announcements. Mr. Turner, do you have anything for us? Um, no announcements at this time. Okay. Uh, I just want to remind everybody our next scheduled meeting is a public hearing on August the 31st at 5.30 p.m. and that'll be followed by a work session at 6 o'clock p.m and those meetings will be here at the Justice Center. Uh, I also just want to, I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again, cases of COVID-19 are on the rise everywhere and especially in Franklin County. And I, I dare say most of us know people who have gotten sick in large numbers of people in the last two weeks. So I just, I strongly encourage everyone to consider receiving the vaccine if you haven't, at least talk to your doctor if you have concerns and let them give you advice about it because it can save your life. Uh, Commissioner Wester, do you have any announcements? Yes. Commissioner Swills? Commissioner Foster? No. Okay. This time then, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Wester has made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Commissioner Swells has made a mo had <coughs> a seconded the motion. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion to adjourn, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, same sign. The motion will carry three to zero and we stand adjourned. Thank you everyone for coming tonight.